Hello, this is Jacob Avila of 5 Minute Sono, and today I'm going to show you how to identify superficial venous thrombosis. So I don't usually talk about literature in my 5 Minute Sono videos, but I feel like in this case I need to explain why you should care about these SVTs. The reason is because of this. This is the STEF study. It included 171 patients, and they found that out of those 171 patients that were referred to ultrasound for suspicion of superficial clot, 25% of those did have the superficial venous thrombosis, but also had a concomitant DVT, and 5% of those guys had a PE. So they show that you have basically 25% of your patients with SVT also have a DVT. Kind of a big deal. There was a couple of other studies. The POST study had an N of 171. The OPTIMEV study had an N of 788. And these studies basically had the same rate of DVT as the STEF study, the previous one I talked about. But they reported another interesting fact, and that's that about half of those DVTs that these patients had were actually non-contiguous, meaning they maybe had a clot in the greater saphenous that was kind of isolated, and then maybe the femoral vein, which is further down than the greater saphenous, had that DVT, or the popliteal vein had the DVT. So not necessarily communicating. And 20% of the time, they were actually contralateral DVTs. So they had a right-sided greater saphenous vein DVT, and then a left-sided femoral vein DVT. So kind of important facts and to know that these patients that have the SVTs, especially when they're bigger than five centimeters, actually are pretty high risk for having DVT and should probably be anticoagulated. So your probe of choice for this examination is going to be a linear probe. It's a superficial probe. It's going to give you the highest resolution image of that vein. So let's say you have a patient with a red painful area on the leg. How do you differentiate between an SVT, cellulitis, or an abscess? If you need a review on how to tell the difference between cellulitis and an abscess, go back and watch my 5-Minute Sono soft tissue video. What we're going to focus on here is what a superficial venous thrombosis looks like. SVTs are more common in the lower extremities and are going to be more common in patients with pre-existing coagulation disorders and actually in varicose veins. So here are the veins of the leg, and the most common location is going to be the, either the greater saphenous vein or tributaries of the greater saphenous or small saphenous vein. And these numbers, they don't add up to 100%, but a lot of these guys are going to have clots in more than one vein. So this is a vein. And typically with the veins, when you add a little pressure, they compress 100%. So they just flatten 100%. This is a normal compressible peripheral vein. This is not that. So here's that same little vein. It's a different one. It's the greater saphenous. You can see that it is non-compressible. You can actually see echogenic material within it. And you can see that it's not compressible. This is what an SVT looks like. Here's another example. Right here you have this vein. You actually see a little bit of echogenic material in it. And it's non-collapsible. It's really that easy. You have a patient with varicose veins. This is what those varicose veins could look like. You can see that there's clot in this varicose vein over a very long distance. Here's another one, an example of why we should probably worry about these, especially if they're greater than 5 centimeters in depth and close to the SFJ, or the saphenofemoral junction. This is the greater saphenous vein here. And you can see that there's some echogenic material in it, and it's non-compressible. Here's that same exact patient, and you see that there's actually also clot in that patient's common femoral vein right here. So common femoral vein has that clot, is non-compressible. There's that greater saphenous vein. So to recap, if you find a superficial venous thrombosis that's greater than five centimeters, the current ACCP guideline or the American College of Chest Physicians states that you should probably treat that, especially if it's in the lower extremities. The reason for that is because they have an increased risk of having a concomitant DVT or PE. Also, the risk of that thing extending into a DVT is higher than if they didn't have it. That's it for this week's 5 Minutes Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet if you have any questions or comments. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put in your name and your email address in the little text boxes and never miss another video. And if you like the podcast sent directly to your smartphone or tablet, go ahead and go to whatever podcasting service you use. Type in 5 Minutes Sono. Leave me a rating and a review. And don't forget to subscribe. Cabo was freaking amazing. Yeah, it was. It was so amazing that on the last day of Cabo Fest, we were already talking about the fact that we need to do this conference again next year. Absolutely. A perfect 72 degrees, constant sun, the beach, pools, margaritas, scanning. It added up to be one of the best experiences of our lives. Getting to hang out with you amazing people was definitely the best part, though. And we're still glowing from the experience. Of course, some of us got a little more intimate with the attendees than others. But in all seriousness, we had tons of fun with our families and the course participants. 
and the resort was totally incredible. Great food, beautiful views, and it was completely all inclusive. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to throw the biggest party in the history of ultrasound parties. Next year, we found out that there's an amazing all-inclusive resort that we can completely take over and own the entire place for a week. And we're going for it. Same incredible setting, same incredible instructors, just bigger. But to pull it off, here's what we're going to need from all of you. Tell everyone you know about Cabo Fest 2018 and tell them that we're giving them a discount if they register early. 10% off registration if they sign up before July 1st. And we're doubling down on the fun this year. We're snorkeling, scanning on a cruise ship, surfing, racing dune buggies in the desert, deep sea fishing, zip lining, and having faculty and attendee dinners every night. We swear, it's going to be the most fun you've ever had at an event. Seriously, if it's not the most fun you've ever had at a conference, then we'll refund your registration. Does that sound crazy? You're damn right that sounds crazy, but you don't understand. You haven't been there, so fix that and register now. Go to CaboFest2018.com. Oh yeah, you know what? We almost forgot. We're not the only ones that are going to be there. Check this out. We have Rob Rogers will be doing his fantastic teaching course. And yes, Master Educator Amo Matu will be there running an amazing ECG workshop. And there's going to be a lot more incredible educators coming. But more on that later. For now, register for Cabo Fest. And you know what else? You can sign up for some of the conference or you can sign up for the whole shebang. This is your vacation CME and we want you to customize it the way you like. So order your Speedo, slather on some tanning lotion and register now at CaboFest2018.com. See you there.